All right, so today was the Team Pursuit qualifying rounds, and I just want to go through the technology used, what sort of equipment people were using, uh, and things like that. Obviously, I can't use the rights and all the rest of it, but we're going to start with the women's, and first of all, we have the German team. Now, the German team are on their Fez bikes, which is basically the German Institute of Sport, um, their own bikes. Same with the wheels. You can see they've got very nice custom cockpit here, very low um, on the front end. I'll try and get my little pointer up so it's easier to see, uh, but I think... Yeah, the, the key thing is is that like where they're starting on the base bars is really, really low, which I think is a massively important thing. Dan Begum, I remember saying, the, well, like the, was it said that the first opening lap was maybe like 45 kilometers an hour average. Therefore, it's really important to have a super aero position. So you need to get low on the front end, which is good. And they're also pretty narrow as well. So they look very similar to the watch up ones. Um, and then these are custom extensions. I'm not 100% sure where they are. They could be speed bars. They could not be. Um, the helmet as well, we're going we're gonna to have a look now. I'm not sure which helmet this is. I thought it was like a laser volante, but I'm actually unconvinced if it is or not, um, just because it looks slightly different. Um, then wheels again are like Fez own brands and they've got a back chain ring on there as well. Germany obviously beat the women's world record by like four seconds. It was a really, really dominant performance from them. Next, we're gonna go on to America, another classic sort of big name favorites. Uh, I think they had an interesting, um, oh, here we go. This is easy to see. They have interesting equipment. So they have this weird felt bike where the drive um, drive side is on the left-hand side of the bike, um, the drivetrain, sorry, which I think is weird. They've got these Vision Aero crank sets. Again, how much do they add? No one knows. Um, but then they go and do weird things like have these overshoes that I don't think are very quick compared to the ASOS overshoes that they run for time trials. Maybe they've tested them. I don't know, but it does seem odd. Head front, head disc wheels. I'm not sure there's too much in it, but generally everyone knows that the Camagnola Ghibli wheels are the fastest. Um, which is why everyone uses them, who doesn't really have sponsor issues. Jira Air Ahead, again, not sure. And then their um, armrests, or apart from her, I think, I'm not sure, sorry, what her name was, but Chloe Diger and the rest of them are all using Aero Coach extensions, um, which is dissimilar to Chloe Diger on the TT, where she was using watch shop extensions. But again, I don't sure that they actually as much in the extensions themselves. I think the main thing actually is, um, is just like the position, obviously, um, and it's easier to get that often with an integrated sort of setup. Uh, but yeah, interesting bikes from them. You can buy these felt bikes. They are pretty old. They not, haven't been remade since 2016. Uh, but yeah, America had a good good time, I think, third overall. So not horrendous, but Chloe Dargett did blow them all apart towards the end, um, which was actually a, a common theme a lot of them because it happened to GB, happened to Italy, um, happened to GB, both men and women's. Uh, now we're going to go to GB. We're going to go through the men's bikes a little bit. Um, well, it's the same bike, but I'll just go through the men's um, equipment choice a bit more. But all I wanted to point out was that GB on the women's side did use different helmets. So they used a POC Temple for Katie Archibald uh, and Josie Knight, I think it was. Um, but anyway, two of them used the POC Temple, which is interesting because British Cycling generally will stick with its um, manufacturers. Um, that it chooses like a laser. They'll all have the same, but maybe they must have tested it. Her position was a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, interesting bikes, but we'll get into that in a minute. Then we go over to the men's side. The rest of the women's ones, there was nothing really too spectacular um, or that different, uh, in my opinion, compared to sort of a standard setup. Like, you know, there was nothing crazy. The men's TT bikes for Italy, all I wanted to comment on was the extensions. They are a work of art. They look so nice. You can see Gann is here at the top with his own ones. I think they must be like custom made by Moss or something. They say like 3T there, but I don't think they are. I think they're pretty much sure they're Moss, but they even then, like it could be anyone who makes them. It's so hard to figure out these days. Um, but yeah, piece to speeds all round, I'm pretty sure on the track. And I don't think anyone else really runs, well, anyone serious runs any different tires. And then yeah, Campagnola Ghibli's, as I said before. Uh, Cask Mistral's, I believe they are. Could be Beluga's. I can never tell the difference between them, but I'm pretty sure they're Mistral's. Um, but yeah, Italy had a really good time, beat the team beat the team pursuit world record by like four seconds uh did a 345 or the olympic record sorry um and then yeah nice overshoes as well now we get on to my favorites and everyone's favorite it seems denmark now so for denmark again they're on the old school argon 18 bike not the new one which they developed or the australians developed but more on that later because we all know what happened with that and the um issues with the cockpit but anyway they've got very interesting setup they're super low on the side very narrow they've got the watch up extensions as you'd expect campagnola ghibli wheels vortec overshoes which are like 300 quid oh no the standard ones are 300 quid, like the most expensive ones are like thousands, and they all are like custom fitted to your leg, which is pretty amazing. But also if we look at these plasters here. Now, obviously you're not allowed to have overshoes going past your halfway up your leg, which is, um, you know, you see our rules. I think it's a good rule, people make fun of it, but we don't want to be looking like triathlons and cycling, so good rule. Um, but they've used plasters. It's questionable if it's in the rules or not in the rules. I mean, the rules are very ambiguous. Um, they don't really say anything too clear cut, but they probably aren't 
well, in the spirit of the rules, but as Dan Bingham in his little book said, it doesn't matter about the spirit. Can they get away with it? Yes. Is it going to be quicker? Yes. But I don't think that's the main thing. I think their skin suits are all slightly different, apparently, as well. And the helmets, we're going to get onto it. He's obviously got um, a POC, but then the other two, one is a Mistral, and I believe two of them have a Met drone or a Met, or oh, what's the other one? Concordia. Um, that's what they look like to me. Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't always remember all these details. And then chain rings, they're just using the watch shop era ones, I believe, um, with a wax chain. I'm pretty sure most teams are running wax chain. If you're not running a wax chain these days, I mean, you might as well just give up. Like, I just don't see the point. Um, but yeah, again, we're going to look at the, them now. Their positioning has really got a lot better, a little bit more head down, um, in my opinion, which is good for the track because you don't need to really see where you're going um, when you're on the front, especially. Um, but yeah, super good position by them. Super good time. Favorites for the win, obviously. Then we're going to go on to Australia. And when you just look at the difference here, though, just on the overshoes here, like these are silicon ones, don't look that quick. These are like Bortec, custom to their leg. Like just small things like this, I think, is where you can just pick up tiny amounts. And like, because all the athletes are pretty similar, it really does add up. But here, this is the new bike that uh, University of Adelaide, I think it was, and Argon and Zip all came together to make the super quick bike. But then it snapped. Uh, the handlebar snap, they said they had it up to 350 kilogram meters, which um, is a unit with which I'm not very familiar. I thought you use, no, normally you use Newton meters. But anyway, apparently, basically, it means that it should be really strong and it's double the ISO standard or triple the ISO standard. So it, basically, it shouldn't crack. But it did crack. They got another go. Um, and here's their bikes. They've got zip wheels, obviously. Um, custom extensions, they were made by some weird niche company. I can't remember the name. Uh, but again, like, I mean, there's no point really naming them. You can't go out and buy them unless you've got like a million pounds. But it's interesting to see that they all do run those now. While back in the day, it was all poles. The only poles I saw was like in the French team, I think, in the women's French team. I'm pretty sure all the rest had custom extensions or just at least error extensions. Uh, chain rings just look like standard ones, um, nothing too crazy. And then they've got the cask Mistral as well. Um, but yeah, shame for Australia, didn't qualify. Then we've got the GB bikes. Now, these have had a lot. Someone on one speed play, I think that's definitely an advantage. Hope wheels, are they Hope wheels? I don't know. They could just be rebranded Campagnolo Ghibli's. I don't think GB really care. Like they'll buy them and just respray them, whatever. Like they want the fastest wheels. The Lotus bike obviously has got really wide forks and chain stays to try and minimize the, well, in their words, it's going to minimize the amount of turbulence created by the wheel, which in a disc wheel, I don't know how much it is, but anyway. And then that basically by having the forks further away means it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, create as much drag. Whether that works or not, I have absolutely no idea as um, I don't study aerospace engineering. Uh, but yeah, again, they've got pretty naughty overshoes. Um, they've worn the laser Volante helmets as well, so no messing around from them. And to be honest, like it's quite a nice setup. They've also got the weird thing where they change the pitch, the chain. So if you don't know what that means, it means they change the length between each of the pins. So basically it means you can get a bigger chain ring. So let's say we're a 70 tooth chain ring. Well, the diameter can be less because all the teeth are smaller and the gaps between the teeth are smaller. Um, apparently that helps on the aero. I don't know how much it does, but they had a, a not great ride either. But anyway, that rounds it up for all the tech from the team pursuiting. I do love it. The sprint tech's never really as exciting because it's basically the same frame with just normal handlebars. But the team pursuit stuff is where everyone goes crazy and especially Denmark. Be interesting to see if the UCI decide that it's, they've had enough and want to ban um, the plaster technique or not. Um, but anyway, that's enough from me. Cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one.